Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool video for you today. Today we're going to do a really weird one. This is something we haven't attempted before. There is this town near us uh, in South Carolina that we do some business in. And it's an old timey town. Still has a lot of the old town flavor. people yelling in the background and uh, the town clock has stopped it no longer works uh, ladies and gentlemen this is Joe's classic video games back with another cool repair video for you today this is a really weird one there is this town near us here in South Carolina that we have some business in and uh, the people down here are very nice but one of the issues that they have is that their old town clock has stopped working so we're going to try to fix it what do you think about that this is a really cool old town it's got all the old buildings still in downtown and we're down here fixing stuff up a little bit but anyway this clock doesn't work and that's a shame so we're going to fix it uh it's got, it's a two-sided clock and it stands about i don't know it must be a little more than 10 feet tall and it's a two-sided clock this is not an old 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 clock it's just made to look like an old clock and i believe that back in the day this town never even had an old clock in it this is just kind of to uh make the uh downtown district look a little better but it doesn't tell time right so we're gonna take it apart and fix it it's a it's an electric two-faced clock so we're gonna get all up in it what do you think about that now the first thing that we checked was the power is right there that power box I believe only runs the clock so it comes underground and comes up in this base and I'll show you what's in the base first and we'll start at the beginning just like whenever we, were, we fix arcade games you know we always check the power going in uh, which we've already done on this one but I'll show you uh, I'll show you what we checked out. So down in the base of this thing, there is a, just a uh, power plug basically. Uh, and then the clock itself plugs into it. Now the first thing that the power runs to is this control box. And so it has three positions. You can have it in running, you can turn it off, or you can hold it on reset. So what reset does is it makes every, it makes the clock run 10 times faster. And I'll show you how all that works here in a minute. But I haven't taken this box apart, but it seems to, all of this seems to be working to me. So all of this, uh, I think it's just a switch in there where it switches um, 120 volts power. Uh, either to good lord either to coming out if it's in run position or in reset position which are two different lines uh, or you can just turn it off so it's I think it's just a three-way switch inside of this box so I don't think there's much in there and then the wiring runs out the top so once it does that it runs up to the actual clock so there's just a little access plate down here in the bottom. I'm going to leave it off because we might need to turn it off or put it on the, the 10 times test and all that. But I'll show you how they've got that wired up up at the top. So up here on the top of this sucker, there's a little access plate you can take off on the side. And so you can look in it. We got the, we swapped the light bulb out, of course. The light bulb is working now. And then inside, there's a little bit of room where you can get in there and mess with some wiring and stuff. But the whole problem is, there's not much room to work on anything. So what we're gonna have to do is take one of the faces off. So we're gonna take this face off because I need to find the part number of those electric motors up in there. Uh, we tried emailing the manufacturer, but they didn't, uh, they haven't gotten back to us, unfortunately. So, um, which is a shame because there's nobody around here that works on clocks or anything that can fix these things. And we just want to know some part numbers and stuff, you know. We're not trying to get a warranty thing or anything. <laughs> we're just we're just looking for part numbers. So now I gotta go digging instead. Um, 
But uh, we're gonna take this one face off, which is really easy, there's just screws on it. Take the whole face off, and then we can be able to get in there and mess with everything. The, the motor on this side is actually working still, but it's just not turning fast enough. So we're gonna try to oil it. I don't know, it might work. But the one on this side is completely dead. We've tried swapping the two harnesses, and that doesn't change anything. So the, the one on this side always works, the one on this side always doesn't work, no matter which harness is plugged in. So uh, I'm pretty sure that it's the motors, but it's, it's strange because the bottom motor is the one RPM per, one revolution per minute motor that runs the clock, and then the top ones are the 10 uh, RPM motors that run the, uh, the fast forward, basically. The, on this side, the 10 works and the one works. On this side, the one doesn't work and the 10 doesn't work. So uh, we're gonna take it all apart, see if we can oil anything and see if we can get anything uh, back up and running. Got the face of it off in the trim rings. Um, here is the motor. Synchron, oh, Synchron, made in the USA. Uh, bup, bup, bup. And then the part numbers. I think I might have to order that whole assembly if I figure out that that's definitely the problem. Here it says 110 volt, 60 hertz, and I thought I saw where it said revolutions somewhere, RPMs. And then down here, but anyway, this is the what sets the hands. This one is the 1 RPM, that's the 10 RPM. So we're going to look at the one that's still up in it and leave that one in it, and we're going to uh, try to oil that one and see if we can get it to do its thing. As you can see, there are some gears down in there. Um, you wouldn't think that those would jam up just from lack of oil, though, but they might. And uh, we had it running last week, but it doesn't seem like it's running at all now, so we'll, uh, we'll mess with it a little bit, see what we can figure out. If worst case scenario, we'll just order new assemblies for it. Alright, so we oiled that side messed with all the connections the connections ain't great but uh, it is actually working now for at least temporary I don't know how you're gonna be able to see it with the Sun okay if you watch very carefully it is actually working it might be hard to tell on tape but it's slowly moving like it should one RPM per minute or something like that. Okay, so this one that we took out was the one that never works. And so the way I'm looking at it, if you turn the way they've designed it, if you turn this set knob here, it turns this gear which turns a gear down in here, which is what moves the hands. But there's a slip clutch where the motor doesn't have to turn to make that happen. The motors can turn and it turns this gear, which turns this gear that's got the slip clutch on it, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm thinking is maybe one of these motors is uh, jammed up to where it won't let this gear turn. And that's why both motors won't work because they're both connected by that gear. So that's my thoughts at least, or not not this gear, the big gear there. That's my thoughts at least. So uh, I'm going to take the motors off and then we'll see if we can get the, the motors to turn by hand and if the gear will turn by hand. All right, so we're back here at the shop. Um, I've been researching clocks, trying to figure out What's the deal with clocks? So I figured out a little bit, okay? So these are not, I, th I was thinking that they were called Synchron, that that was the company. That's not, that's the type, kind of the, uh, the brand, I guess. It was made by a company named Hansen. And so Hansen is like a really good motor company. They make all kinds of motors for clocks and things like that. So these are actually, pretty good little motors it looks like 
Again, I am no expert on clocks, so there's probably clock people out there like harumphing me right now, which is fine. We're just trying to fix this thing, right? Nobody will help us, so we're gonna do it ourselves. So here's what I've figured out. So Hansen makes these little motors, and as you saw, they were mounted on an actual movement on the back of the clock face. And so it had two motors. This one runs at one, one RPM, one revolution per minute. This one runs at 10 RPMs, 10 revolutions per minute. And they call that one the reset motor on that movement, right? Okay, so to be honest with you, I have no clue what the, what, why you would ever need that 10 RPM motor. It makes no sense to me at all. The only thing I can figure is if you had some way to remotely adjust it, you might need it. So what's going on with these clocks is a gentleman has a company where he builds these things and he's using like off the shelf parts for some of it. Like he's not making his own movements or anything. Maybe if it was a huge company they would. He's just using off the shelf clock movements and there's there's like a hundred different ones or something probably with that are a similar design. But this is like kind of one of the better ones, it looks like. So he didn't cheap out or anything. He didn't do us wrong or anything. It's just the things have been, these two motors have been on the back of that movement in the clock, along with the other two, outside in the heat and the rain and the whatever for 10 years. So, you know, they just died after a while. That's going to happen from time to time. And you can see that I've broke one of the wires just carrying the thing around because it's all brittle from the heat from inside the clock. So basically, that thing's getting hot, 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 hot. And so I, I could barely see the part number on the side of it. And I, I looked with a light and I messed with it for a while. And I looked at, I found the, the Hanson catalog and looked through what they say the part numbers are and everything and blah, 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 blah. And I finally figured out what this is. So this is a one RPM and it is a five watt motor. They make 3 watts, 4 watts, and 5 watts. So this is the 5 watt, which is the more expensive one, so it's the more heavy duty one. So like, again, they got it not cheap out or anything. So I ordered more of the same motor. It's a 5 watt motor. And this would be this is the one that attaches on the bottom to the mechanism and makes it makes the hands turn around one time per minute. So you can see on this one that if I turn this by hand Oh, I'm going to try to. Yeah, hear that? It will turn. And it's like a slipping sound. Okay. So here's my brand new ones. I cannot turn it by hand. So I have to assume that these new ones are how it's supposed to be. You know, like, I can't turn that one by hand either. So this one's slipping. I think it's screwed up. I think it's just it's 10 years old. It's time to retire it. Okay, so then on the top you have this one. This is the 10 RPM motor. So if you turn this one by hand, watch what it does. It kind of coasts and stops, right? See how this one has an elongated box? I think it's because this is more like a direct drive thing, you know? And this one is more like a... There's some gearing going on, so... so it seems like I would imagine that's probably what it's supposed to do so this motor is probably fine the 10 rpm one but I broke it by screwing up the wires because it was all brittle and everything I could probably fix that if I wanted to but oh and the, the, I couldn't find this 10 rpm one I found some um, somewhere but I didn't I didn't know if they were the exact right thing but anyway so those are a little harder to find because everybody just wants the one rpm one this is they're calling it the reset motor and that's a dual movement a dual motor movement on the back of that thing and then remember there's one on each side so there's four motors okay so the best I can tell now I may be completely wrong about this but the best I can tell the purpose of the reset one would be to um if the clock's off a little bit. So let's say you have a clock and it's run by this motor and you look up and it's been a couple months and it's two minutes slow. Well, what you could do is, you saw how down at the base of the clock there was that switch where it's in run or it's in off or it's in reset. And then it says 10X, which is this one. So what that's doing is when it's in run, it's sending power to this. When it's off, it's not sending any power. And when it's in 10 times reset, it's sending power to this. 
So I think the purpose of it would be you look, oh, the clock's two minutes short. So you, you put it on reset for, and it runs it 10 times fast, you know, and so to, to adjust it up two minutes, you would run it for uh, 12 seconds. Is my math right there? I think. So you'd run it for, so for 12 seconds, you'd put it on reset and then you'd pop it back to run normal and it would, it would move the hand up a little bit. You'd get it back where it's supposed to be and everything's cool. Okay. If you're doing that with one clock, maybe that makes sense, right? But I, we're talking one with two faces. So if there's two motors, and if they're, you know, if one of them's two minutes off and the other one isn't, if I hit that switch, it makes both of them run. So basically, it's completely freaking useless. Even if you're, even if you're going to put it on, uh, uh, like daylight savings time, so you need to set it up an hour or set it back an hour. How in the world are you going to do that at ten times the speed? It takes forever. To set it up an hour, you'd have to run it for six minutes to get it to go up one hour. And then what if you had to, and it doesn't go backwards, so you'd have to run it for, what, how long to get it to go up 20, you'd have to run it for two hours to get it to go up 23 hours. You know, it's just it's completely useless. There's absolutely no reason for this thing to even be on there that I can see. Now, I may be wrong. And they could, they might have a thing where, like, on some of them, it's, like, remotely controlled. So maybe you've got some kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe you've got, like it's way up on the freaking wall somewhere and you've got a switch somewhere else, or may maybe it's even controlled over the internet in certain instances, you know, maybe it's got some kind of, I don't know, if it's on Ant in Antarctica and a scientist is watching it from Chicago and he wants to change it, you know, hell, I don't know. To me, completely useless to... to if the timing is off on the on the either one of the faces, the only way I'm going to be able to fix it is you got to climb up that ladder and turn the little knob. You saw the little knob on the back of each one of them. You're going to have to set it by hand. I mean, this thing's not going to do anything. So, in other words, these are going bye bye. I'm just going to ditch these. I'm just going to put the one regular speed one on there. That should run the clock just fine. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. And there's other movements that they make that just have the one motor. Most of them are like that. As a matter of fact, this one with two motors you can you can buy it but there's not very many of them like that most of them are just the movements just have one motor so i don't know why the gentleman made it with those he, maybe he just had some stock parts and that's how he makes all of them but in our instance i don't think we need it at all so we're going to get rid of it so all i'm going to do is i'm going to make another harness just like this one but with just the one motor on it and a new connector. The, the connectors in the machine were a little screwed up you can see too how the pins kind of move around and stuff um, I said the connectors in the machine, the connectors in the in the head. So I'm going to make new connectors, which I've got here, and a new harness to where we just send power to one motor. So I'm just going to put one of these Molex connectors on here. I'll look and see which two pins I need. And then we'll uh, both of these will have a little thing. And when I climb back up into the into the uh, clock, I'll take the one off. The, the, the two on the other side I'll take off and replace with a single and then I'll put a single on the face that we take down and that should get us back up and running I can't I can't see why that wouldn't and I can't I haven't been able to figure out why there's a reset one um, and the, the 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 company that that made the clock never responded to us so I'm kind of on my own here people but by the end of this video we're gonna see if I figured it out or not right <laughs> So I'll put the little connectors on it, and then we'll go back out to the clock. Okay, we're back out at the clock. We took the face back off. We got our new one. We took the screws out. Got our little Molex plug on there. Let's see if this sucker will fit in there. Huh. Like a glove. All right. I'm gonna screw it down, then I'll do the ones up the top on the other, the other face. Okay, got the new one mounted in. And when you turn this little knob, the hands are moving. So it looks like it is engaged with all the gears. Or I guess this knob isn't anymore, but this, well, it is still, but this is, uh, this is touching the gear like it should. So I think we're good. So we're gonna plug it in, and then we're gonna set that face while we work on the other face, because it's kind of a pain to put the thing back in. Um, so the way we're setting it is there's a clock right down the street 
which is a little redundant, and it says it's 1156. So we're gonna put it on 1156, and then we're gonna let it sit here all day and make sure it's keeping good time. Side number two. Let's see if the sun if the sun can tell us anything. Uh-huh, the shadow is moving. You know what I think? I think we're all the way live, that's what I think. Okay, so several hours have passed. The light is turned on, so you can't, it's hard, a little harder to see it, isn't it? So let's see here. It is 7-11. And the clock at the bank, I mean at the telephone company, says 7-11. <laughs> yeah. So we're right on it. I think it's the same as it was. Let's see on this side. Almost at 7:12. Now I didn't have it set to the second or anything, so that's probably about 7:12 there. If you were looking at a level, and the bank still says. I mean, the telephone company still says 7:11. Let's see how long it takes to turn it. 7:12. All right. Here comes the lightning. So I think we fixed it. Isn't that pretty cool? So we just got one thing left to do. All right, so over the course of this video, about a month has passed. You can see the sign lights up really nice at the top. Let's see how this side looks. Oh, it's harder to see this side because of the backlight, but we painted this side too. So let's check the time. It's been a, it's been a month since we replaced the motors, so it's 7.06, right? And on this side, it is 7.06, but it's almost 7.07, so we'll wait. So the sign down at the, if you remember, I think it was about 15 seconds fast from the clock down the street. So we'll wait till it says 7.07. And see here. All right, I would consider that about 7.07. .07. So the clock down the street says 7.06 .06 still. Still says 7.06. 7.07. Can you believe that? It's been a month, and I think it's still right about dead on where I said it. Both sides. Very cool. All right, so I guess we fixed it. And it looks great. 
so cool. What an addition. How cool is that? Looks great, works great. Nice old looking clock for this cool old town and it's old downtown area. Hope everybody enjoys it. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think about it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Glad we got it fixed. And we will see you on the next video. Have a good one.